everyone, this is Fantasy Esque, and welcome back to The Sims 4 Royal Witch Kingdoms. Today we are continuing with the noble house of Holbot. Lady Ophelia is in her third trimester. I feel like she's super close to having her baby, and I was getting very stressed because after her visit with the queen, her needs were all over the place. Her bladder was really low, her hunger was low, and fun hygiene, not hygiene, energy as well. So we managed to alleviate some of the concern that uh, I was having by getting her to quickly use the bathroom and then eat some tofu dogs. Thank goodness, because if you guys remember, I did say that if our pregnant sims had three of their stats that weren't in green, then the baby would have a one in three chance of being born sickly. And I do not want that because this baby needs to be healthy. This baby is going to be High Prince Vex's best friend. So we want the best friend to be a completely healthy baby. <laughs> I mean, a sickly baby could be friends too, but that's besides the point, okay? She's getting tired, so maybe we need to send her to bed. I'm going to send her to bed. Why not? Now, I need to show you guys that... How you doing? Oh, whoa, oh, well, King Uther, you didn't even give me a chance to accept that invitation, okay? I would have accepted that invitation. I didn't even get a chance to click on that. But I was going to say, I need to show you guys where we're going to keep the the babies slash where the birth chamber is. It's all the way up here on this tower. Uh, I think we had a bed here before I took that out and just put some bassinets. So there we go. The babies, our safest possessions, need to be up in the tower. So we have that. Another thing I was going to mention, in the previous episode, Lady Ophelia rolled a wand to become friends with King Uther. And then Lord Dante I think got called by King Uther to go on a duel, like a second one, that I didn't catch on camera. And in that duel, Lord Dante actually won. And there's this weird thing happening with The Sims where if you leave the lot or if you swap households, if you leave the lot, then for some reason the game gets rid of any whims that you've locked. So I think that's what happened to Lady Ophelia. I thought I forgot to lock it in, but I went back and watched the footage when I was editing, and I did lock it in. Unfortunately, um, because we had to leave the estate to go duel, we lost that. But okay, it's snowing, even though it's autumn. I think we can go and potentially head to It's like 7 though, I don't know if he wants to head to bed. But we'll get him to practice some magic, and we can catch up once Lady Ophelia has gone into labor. No? No? Do you want to do that? Also guys, before, before I leave, there's just so much to talk about. Some of the babies have turned into toddlers. So, oh look, King Uther, he's uh, doing his, I was gonna say morning training. No, he's doing his nightly jogs, which is, which is good. The queen we saw in the movie was also really getting into her training and fitness. So some of the babies have aged up into toddlers. We have who is it? I think High Princess Faina Sikar aged up into a toddler. She looks so cute. She looks a little bit evil though, I will say. She looks a little bit scary, like her mother. But she's really cute. We had... who else? I think I already said that Master Valar aged up. Master Valar Rowan. He has his father's light purple skin Lysander. He was the baby that was born blue but turned purple later on. Because the game doesn't have a purple baby skin, which is so silly. Anyways, that happened. Uh, we also recently had uh, Alisan's baby age up. Oh jeez, what was his name? There's so many names to remember. I think it was Master Diamond. Was it? I think it was. Master Diamond Sisita aged up into a toddler. He looks so adorable, guys. He's genetically... We can't tell his features, obviously, because he's a toddler, but... In terms of just coloring, he's exactly like his dad. He's got his dad's green skin, he's got his dad's uh, ice blonde hair, and he also has his father's white eyes. So that's kind of cool. But okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off, and then we'll catch up when Ophelia is ready to give us a big surprise. It's like the middle of the night, and oh my goodness, her needs go down so fast. She just woke up because. She was about to pee herself, and then her hunger was so low. Kind of scary. 
This is interesting. I didn't realize talking to yourself for erratic sims gets your fun and social up. That's kind of cool though. That's kind of cool. Now another thing I want to talk about, I think some of you have mentioned that there is an option where you can only age the played household so everyone else's ages stay frozen but the households we're playing it continues and at first i was thinking about going ahead and playing on normal lifespan but doing that option but then i figured you know what especially because i'm just so excited to get to the arranged marriages part and all these other things i like i'm, I'm excited to match make okay i'm really excited so I kind of just want to see the kingdoms grow at this point. If it starts getting too fast for me and I, I'm wanting to slow down and stop, then I might do something like that. There might also be some points in time where I freeze the ages if like the story demands it, if I feel as though the ages have to be frozen because I, I'm focusing on something in particular or I'm focusing on some characters. but. At this point in time, I'm, I'm happy for everyone else to age up. I knew when I was setting things up this way that there might be certain... Um, there might be certain sims that we don't get to see age up. That'll, they'll, you know, they'll already have gone through their birthdays without us being there. And I'm fine with that. I just don't want to stick around too long. Especially, I mean, I do love the toddlers. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of nice that they're being taken care of and growing up without me having to be there. Although, I will say that once we do get to, like, we return to the other kingdoms, then hopefully as the characters start developing more relationships, we'll get a chance to see the kids in, you know, all the life states, um, all life stages, even if we're not playing in that particular household. So, like, when you go back to Ramong, all the kids will be toddlers, and hopefully we can see the kids and those kind of things. Hope that makes sense. But I guess... No babies. No babies? Okay, no babies. Not yet, not yet. I thought she would go into labor in the middle of eating with something, but she didn't. I guess we're going back to bed. Actually, does she want... Yes, we'll, we're going back to bed, guys. Okay. We're going back. We're out of bed. We went to bed, and now we're out of bed, okay? <laughs> Jeez! Let's go to the bathroom really quickly. I want her needs to be up when she goes into labor. We don't want to risk anything. I don't know how long it's going to be, and I don't want... Like, look at this. If she goes into labor now, and her bladder is really low, and her hunger catches up with the way her fun's going, we might have an issue with this baby being sickly, so do not want to deal with that. Okay, you guys, you need to climb all the way up, which is a bit of a walk, I will admit. It's a bit of a walk. Let's come here. Um, oh, he wants to give her a hug, and she wants to give him a hug. They're so cute. Okay, come on, Ophelia. Come on. We can get this done. We can get this done. Now, as she's prepping over here, I need to go ahead and chat a little bit about the movie we had. So, Lady Ophelia did make a trip to the palace um, earlier on Friday. It's currently Saturday. Earlier on Friday. And she went and told the Queen that, you know, we're friends. If you, if you want to know something about my friendship with... The holdigans then you can just ask and I will explain we don't have to go through this really awkward phase and so the Queen asked her and essentially what Lady Ophelia told High Queen Leia was that the basis of a strong kingdom is its foundation and the unity that the people in that kingdom have and she's let the Queen know that her friendship with with um, Lady Amatrice is to keep the court in order and it's gonna it's to help the Queen because High Queen Leia isn't really fond of the Holdigans but they're still a noble family in her kingdom and at least if the Queen's friend is friends with the people she doesn't like the Queen doesn't have to pretend and that way she can be true to how she feels and how she wants to act around the Holdigans um, but at the same time they're not going to go rogue or anything because Lady Ophelia is there to be the bridge between them and keep order in a sense. So that's how she's explained it to High Queen Leia and Leia understands and Leia is thankful for that. 
Um, but then again, Leia is a bit psycho, which we haven't seen. In all honesty, I forgot that Leia was the psycho queen completely. She's been so nice recently, I forgot that. And then I was watching the intro and I was like, oh, wait a second, she's a psychopath. Yeah, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Kind of where we're at. She might be nice now, but who knows how long that would last. Who knows? Anyways, we're gonna have this baby. She's gonna have this baby. Let's see. I'm, I'm particularly excited. Where are you going, Dante, to have some ice cream? Okay, I can see how you need that, but your wife's about to, to give birth. Also, he's the first lord that calls his wife love, and I find that so cute. <laughs> so, so cute. But okay, we're gonna get... Yeah, I'm excited for this baby. Specifically because it's supposed to be the High Prince's best friend, and I want to know who his best friend is. Is it is it a boy? Is it a girl? Like, I want to know. I want to know. I'm so excited. Okay, here she goes. Please tell me Dante can get up here in time. I hope he can. Okay, Dante. So if the baby has the mother's, the dark skin, then we know it has Ophelia's coloring. If the baby has some random skin color, then we know it's going to be a purple baby when it grows up. So, <gasps> it's a boy! It's a boy! Oh, that's so cool. Have we had a miss? We have. We've had Calypso. That's right, Calypso. This is the seventh baby born. Um, this is going to be Master, and we will name him Dorian. Master Dorian Holbot. And I have to say, guys, okay, this name was suggested to me by Aaron, so thank you so much for that, Aaron. I flippin' love Dorian, and I'm wondering if you got this name from Dragon Age Inquisition, because he is my favorite character in Dragon Age Inquisitions, Dorian. Do I play that game? Not really, because I'm incapable, but I flippin' love Dorian in it. Favorite character ever. It's just so cool. But Master Dorian Holbot, and it's a purple baby! I know it looks blue in the portrait panel, and in actuality, ignore the blue, Ice Baby. It's purple. Someone explained this to me um, earlier in one of the videos, and I had absolutely no clue, but they ended up being completely right, is that, for some reason, The Sims 4 doesn't have certain skin tones. It doesn't have the turquoise skin of Lady Kandrika, it doesn't have the purple skins. Um, so, unfortunately, if a baby, like if a child inherits, if a Sim inherits that skin tone, they'll have some Ren color assigned to them. Or maybe the closest color to that skin tone. Maybe the, this blue is the closest color to light purple be, like that the game has for babies because I remember when Master Valar was born in the Rowan household, he was also this light blue and he ended up being light purple. So I'm assuming that's what's going on here. So we have a purple little baby called Master Dorian and that's going to be the prince's best friend. <gasps> oh, Hi Prince Vex and Master Dorian. I love it! Vex and Dorian! Dorian and Vex? Oh, it's so cool. Okay, take care of the baby. Let's feed the baby. Let's go and bounce him. Oh, I am so happy. I am so delighted at this. So delighted. Okay, there we go. We'll take care of the little baby. So we're going to have a dark-skinned baby, and then we'll have... A, so it'll be like a dark-skinned and purple unit. I'm so excited for these two to grow up. Like, their mothers are best friends, and they're going to be best friends. Ah, oh, so good. So, so good. Well, their mothers are getting to be best friends. They're like, they were friends, then the queen got really affectionate, so, like, they're close friends. and It's between close friends and best friends, okay? They're getting there. They're getting there. It's still testy waters, because I don't think they're even considered good friends by the game. They're friends, but... You know, for our queen, she's the closest friend that she has. Like, Ophelia is the closest friend that Leia has at this point. So, there we go. They have already started making plans that children are going to be the closest friends as well. But, who knows? We're getting excited, thinking they might be besties. But, what if Queen Leia never has besties? Like, what if to her, a close friend is just a noble that she's friendlier with than everyone else? I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, but okay, since this is done, and Dante, what are you doing? What are you doing, Dante? He's having a flippin' tofu dog. Dante, come try and 
Like, cuddle your baby. Cuddle your- put down the- put down the tofu dog. Cuddle your baby. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, nice, nice. Look at that, that's so adorable. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, nice. So he's greeted his baby. Now, he doesn't have any whims for the baby, which is very interesting. And neither does um, Lady Ophelia, which, if you remember, I think the Sikars, they had one whim after another for Faina, so I was surprised by that. These two, they're a loving couple, but no one whims for the baby. It's kind of interesting. Well, I guess now that we have wrapped up this, we can actually jump to the Holdigans and uh, get started on them. They need to consummate their marriage. And then, yeah, we'll see how things are going for them and uh, how they're coping with being kind of the alienated house in Holcane. Okay, it is almost 8 a.m. on Saturday, and we are picking up with the noble family of Hold again. This is High Lord Eric, and then his wife, Lady Amatrice, of course. Let's get a quick refresher of their traits, and then we can get started with the consummation. So, High Lord Eric is cheerful, he's romantic, and self-assured. So, that romantic trait is probably what's worrying High Queen Leia, um, even though he has a good relationship with his wife, I assume at this point. Um, he seems like a really nice, caring sort of husband, I feel. Um, even though he has that, the Queen obviously will misinterpret a lot of things when it comes to Uther. This might be one of those things. This definitely might be one of those things. Okay, and then we have Lady Amatrice. She is self-assured, loves the outdoors, and is an animal enthusiast. So she's actually going to get started working on... Look at how cute this is. They need to get chickens. They need some chickens. Unfortunately, they don't, I think, have space for a shed. Look at this. They have ducks and swans. I love it. But, um... Oh, I didn't realize I could play in the water. What the heck? That's so interesting. But, um... I don't know if it would fit here. We'll have to see. At some point, we might finagle with this lot and see if we can fit a shed because I can see Lady Amatrice really loving that. So she's confident and she's really humble. So I kind of get the sense that they are very sure of each other and their relationship and they don't easily get threatened by, like, doubt when it comes to their partner which is very nice, but that confidence might make, especially because, I don't know, I feel like that confidence might make other people misunderstand things quite a bit. Hmm. Okay, well, first things first, guys. We need to go ahead and we are going, oh no, she's not going to initiate it because High Lord Eric is the master, so he's going to do that. Actually, before we jump to that, I want to check out their relationships to see how things are going. So, he has a good relationship with Amatrice. He's met the King and High Queen. And things are positive with them, but, you know, they don't... They have little favor. They have very little favor with the royals at this point. Lady Amatrice, meanwhile, look at her. Her husband hasn't even met the other nobles, which is a bit odd because... Yeah, apparently hasn't met the other nobles. Okay, they should have, but oh well. Also, I know some of you have said that in your own games, you like to put all of your nobles in a club so that they can get to know each other and build relationships. And that does sound like an interesting idea, and I was mulling on adding it to my own game. But then I thought, you know what? The whole reason we'll be having these get-togethers and parties is so that our sims can get to know each other. I personally feel as though the the royals should know all of the nobles that they rule, but I don't think that all of the nobles have to know each other. There might be some nobles that really get along, others who only heard rumors of someone else but don't know them at all. So I'm kind of okay with the nobles not knowing each other, and I want them to naturally get acquainted in these events. So, Lady Amatrice, unlike her husband, is friends already with Lady Ophelia and Lord Dante. 
and I'm ignoring the random people that I don't know, but Lady Ophelia and Lord Dante, she's been visiting her neighbors quite a bit, and she's been making an effort with them, which is really good, and might help them, honestly, might help them in the wrong, uh, long run. We're going to get High Lord Eric, though, um, to initiate this so they can try for a baby, and fingers crossed she manages to conceive. I think that'd be really, really good. I kind of feel bad for them at this point because the whole Canes and the like the royal family at this point and the whole bots, they're so close and they've already planned for their kids to be best friends. And I feel as though if the whole again heir is born, they won't really have it'll it'll be like an outcast child or an awkward third wheel child won't really have like anyone to be close to and that makes me feel so bad oh it'd be so nice if someone else could have like if someone here could have more children or if it could have multiples that'd be so nice because i foresee this child being very lonely in whole cane very very lonely indeed but fingers crossed that things are gonna end up good for them and in all honesty we could get vex if, if High Prince Vex befriends this child, then things will be okay. But I feel as though if Master Dorian befriends this child, then things are going to get very messy with the royal family. Um, it could be like a scenario where, how dare you, you've betrayed me, you know? So, let's hope that is not the case. Okay, so Amatris, I guess we'll just have to wait to see if she is expectant or not but I definitely want to get oh look at this she can also garden stuff which is nice she honestly belongs in Ramong she belongs with Ramong I feel but let's go ahead we're gonna purchase some chickens we're gonna get some hens and a rooster um let's see can we we'll scatter some feed nearby um the Kupalex, why not? We'll name that. And the chickens need names. Let's see. Who's this? Uh, Nugget? That's kind of cute. That, that one's going to be Nugget. Then we have Fluff. Oh, that's cute. Who's Fluff? Fluff? Oh, wait. Nugget is the... Wait. Nugget, are you the male or the female? I can't tell. Hold on a second. I, I can't tell. I cannot tell. Okay, we've got Nugget Fluff, and we have... What is the name? No, you can't be two fluffs in a row. More fluff. Jeez. Oh, um, fluff and Floof. Done. Fluff and Floof. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so uncreative. But... Oh... Wait, chicken. Are these the hens then? It says feed fluff though. And feed fluff. I don't know. We'll figure it out at some point. Uh, can you, can you, can, can they tell us? Assign chickens. I don't know which one's a male and a female. Okay, I wasn't paying, uh, paying attention, keeping track. I wasn't doing any of that when I was trying to name them. My bad. Okay. Amatrice, we need to get some seeds at some point so we can plant some stuff. Let's get some oversized seeds, actually. Lettuce, obagane, mushroom. Let's get some pumpkins. We're going to get two pumpkins and we'll, we'll plant those. So let's plant a pumpkin or some pumpkins. We'll plant some... No, jeez, come on. No, plant some pumpkins. There we go. So we'll do that. I can kind of see Lady Amatris throwing herself into wholesome things like gardening and looking after the chickens because things just don't work out that well for them in court. But I don't I don't know. They might not mind entirely because they're so happy being, you know, at home. Okay, uh, let's water the plants. And then you have mac and cheese you need to make as well. Like this mac and cheese is just unresumed. Someone needs to tend to that. 
Come on, guys. Need to be tending to the mac and cheese. Okay. Here we go. Let's water the garden. A little chick chicks. She likes gardening. Yes. A little chick chicks is so happy. No, it's cute. Now, I'm thinking it could potentially be overwhelming for us to have a pet, but I kind of want them to have some sort of dog. Yeah, or hound. Kind of want them to have something because, like I said, I feel like these guys, they. We have room. We have room one to add stuff like outside for a dog, I feel. And I feel as though because things don't work out for them in the court, they find solace in the animal companions that they have, at least amateur stuff. It's 6 p.m. on Saturday, and look who's come to visit. Hi, Lord Dante. Oh, there's a door in the way. Hi, Lord Dante is such a nice neighbor. This is great because I actually wanted. Um, I was hoping they could naturally meet Hi Lord Eric and Hi Lord Dante. So we're going to invite him in, and then we're going to do a, an introduction. Can we do a respectful introduction? We'll do a friendly one, then. We'll do a friendly one. So, obviously, Lady Amatrice already knows Lord Dante. Um, but now's Eric's chance. Okay, we can do a respectful introduction. That's good. There we go. We're going to do a respectful introduction to each other. Excellent. And um, hopefully... Hopefully the Holdigans can get a hold of themselves by having somewhat of a good relationship with the favored household in Holcane. Okay, he's chatting a little bit. Also, Lady Amatrice, I suspect, might be pregnant because she was almost... She was gagging earlier in the day and she had the little baby thought bubble above her so i'm thinking that we might have some good news soon if you click on the toilet she can also throw up which is good news um and she made some brownies she made some brownies earlier today so i'm kind of gonna i want her to have some of those brownies i think that'd be nice did she already chat with her husband she wanted to and look at this fridge isn't this the cutest flipping fridge ever i think it came with the the country living stuff even the stove it's just so adorable. But okay, she is going to have her brownies. The chickens, uh, look at this. They're so cute. They're happily waddling around back here with this, like, pumpkin forest. It's a flippant forest for them, I'm sure, because of how tiny they are and how huge these these leaves are. The leaves are, like, the size of them. Size of an entire chick. Oh, is Dante leaving? Dante, you leaving? No? No? Also, we have this really cute swing here. Maybe he's going to go play with the chick chicks. <gasps> oh, Dante. Da Dante's like, oh no, he's looking at the garden. I thought he was, I thought he was going ahead. He's like, what is this trash? Oh, oh, he was talking about the weeds. I was like, dude, are you trashing our plants? No, he's talking about the weeds. It's like, what are these weeds? <sighs> okay, it's like he's never seen a garden before. He's like, garden, I must weed. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Well, they don't have space to garden in their home, I think. They might have some stuff underground, but anyways. Lord Eric wanted to woohoo with Lady Amatrice, though, so he might convince her to go for round two. Although, we know um, that, you know, it's a woohoo. It's not a try for a baby, because they haven't given me the direct whim to want to try for a baby. So, for these guys, really, consummation is the only chance they get um, for a conception unless they specifically tell me and look at Dante being so helpful out in the rain They start just going to woohoo and Dante's over there Just gardening away helping us out with our pumpkins. Thank you so much, dude. You're so nice <laughs> You're like so nice. I love Dante Honestly, he's just like the sweetest. He's the sweetest and what's this? He wants to flirt with Lady Amatrice Well, yes, you can flirt with her can give us some attention. I hope Dante. They also only have room for one child, actually. So, I mean, this isn't a household I would want multiples in. Really, I wouldn't. Now, they have this study. Um, so what do I do? Here's the dilemma for these guys that I'm gonna have to figure out. Where do I put, do I have an underground section? It's such a cute house, though. I don't want to change the roof. Maybe I need to have an underground section um, somewhere, somehow. 
where we add rooms because they don't have a lot of space up top, especially for a birth chamber. We're going to have to go down. We do not have room to have a birth chamber up here at all. Um, so I'm going to have to think about where I can do that. We might have to have some sort of access from the outside or I could try and, I don't know who this random person is, or I could try and just get rid of this. And I did. <gasps> Guys, I destroyed the weird TV they had. I got rid of it. It was so cute, but I got rid of it because technology. Ugh. But yeah, I might get rid of this and put a staircase down here somewhere. If it fits, if it doesn't, then again, I shall have to work something else out. But uh, okay, guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>